Good evening. I'm Yvonne Stapp for Science for the Public, and I welcome you to Contemporary Science Issues and Innovations. Tonight, we consider the environment from an artistic perspective. Two Boston area artists, Michelle Rougie and Susan Heidemann, talk about their work and their joint exhibit currently at a Cambridge gallery. Michelle Lougie is a fiber artist, sculptor, and ceramist. She's a member of the Boston Sculptors Gallery, and her work has been widely exhibited in New England. She teaches art at various local museums and at Lesley University. Michelle Lougie's work is inspired by the impact of consumer waste, especially plastic waste in our oceans. For example, she uses discarded plastic bags to create sculptures of marine life, as you will see tonight. Susan Heidemann creates unique paintings and collages, assemblies that focus on in-between entities in the oceans and are meant to remind us of our own primordial beginnings. Her canvases present reconfigured shapes, often layered and artistically sutured to reveal nature in an especially imaginative way. Susan Heidemann taught art at Smith College for more than 30 years and now concentrates on her art full-time at her studio. Both artists exhibit frequently and widely in this area, and for more information, please check the links on our webpage for tonight's event. We are now delighted to welcome Susan Heidemann and Michelle Rougie. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much for giving us your time, and we'll be able to see objects from your exhibit, your current exhibit, which is about to end at, in Cambridge, but it's very clever to uh, exhibit together. Uh, is that the first time that you've done that? It is the first time we've exhibited together. Uh, yes. Susan came to me a few years back. Yeah. And said, you know, I think this work would look really great with my work. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. I'm sure you were pleased, and I'm sure your audience has been pleased, the, the people that go to this very charming gallery in Cambridge. So the other is you both have a purpose that feeds your work. Can you tell us just a little bit about it? Your, the, the, what is it that inspires? Uh, well, I've worked with discarded materials for a long time, and uh, I learned about the plastic debris in the ocean, and um, I taught myself to crochet plastic bags and uh, used that material to create my work um, so that I was really, I was working originally with uh, ocean-related Im uh, imagery. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think you had done other things with uh, uh, maybe like cells, the, the ceramic uh, material yes. with the cells and stuff, but this is awesome. And I think when Susan showed me in the gallery the objects that we're gonna, you're going to be talking about tonight, I couldn't believe they had been crocheted and made of <laughs> plastic bags. But uh, for our audience, uh, she's uh, referring to the huge gyre in the ocean. Uh, there may be more than one at this point, uh, all full of plastic, and you are probably aware of the damage this is doing to marine life. So thank you, and it will be very inspiring. And Susan, how about you with the? Uh, well, I had always been a painter of nature, uh, oil paintings, and uh, in 2005, a, a project that I collaborated with with a poet led me to begin involving stitching in my work. Uh, and uh, from that point on, uh, my, Im my imagery had become more abstracted from nature, and I noticed how often it was the case that forms on a macro level resembled forms on a micro level, and that I was equally uh, inspired by things under a microscope and the cosmos, yeah. uh, and so I began making, constructing forms that were essentially hybrids of many different taxonomies, um, and the stitching was important in, in demonstrating the hy hybridity 
yeah. of these forms. Yeah, yeah, it's very clever. Both, <laughs> uh, that, both of you, this, the, the work is very clever. <laughs> and I think we will go ahead and move on. What we're going to do is let each of the artists uh, to talk and show uh, exhibit some of the work in the, the exhibit and explain for us a little more and then we'll come back and talk all together again shortly. So we're going to start with Susan and her canvases. This is a piece which is actually created on a plastic paper which is called Dupo. It's imported from Japan um, and I'm going to go right to a detail which is the upper central section of it. Um, there are uh, embroidered forms in black mm. at the top. And then as we move down the piece, uh, there is oil painting that is uh, integrated with the embroidery. You can see a very, very faint seam where I attached one piece of Yupo to a larger sheet of Yupo. And uh, the, this piece includes aqueous media, that is water-based media, uh, the stitching, metallic thread, embroidery thread, and oil paint. That's amazing. This <laughs> is <laughs> quite a combination. Right. Uh, uh, right. This is a very much larger piece. That piece was about 53 inches tall. This piece is 87 inches tall. This one is all watercolor paper. It's three sheets of watercolor paper that have been sutured together, and then I have torn up old monotypes and sewn them onto the paper. Um, there are many layers of these torn up monotypes of oh. mine that I've sewn on. Then I've used sewing or embroidery to draw around them. So these forms that are uh, black, molecule-like things are all embroidered and uh, there is also watercolor and uh, aqueous media that have been dripped and splashed onto the entire 87 inches by 48 inches of surface <laughs> area. Uh, Amazing. <laughs> this one is also all paper. Again, three sheets of watercolor paper sutured together. Um, I think we have a detail of ah. this one. So you can really see the number yeah. of layers yeah. that I sew onto the paper. Um, I sometimes attach them only in certain parts of the form so that parts of the form stick up and create a kind of relief quality. You can see the cast shadows that they're creating on the white paper. Um, and again, these are pieces of old collages that I've torn up, and also just shapes that I've uh, torn out of watercolor paper that I have painted certain colors. This one is uh, a more unusual way of working. It's quite a recent one. I used the Yupo paper and the Arch watercolor paper together and sewed them together. Uh, it's 60 inches tall. So the Yupo is underneath the watercolor paper. Then I'll go right to a detail so you mm. can see more clearly. I've literally taken a knife and carved out the watercolor paper to expose the Yupo. And then I've painted the Yupo that comes through in metallic silver gouache. Um, and you can see in this detail, again, there are pieces of torn up monotypes. There are pieces of watercolor paper that I've painted beforehand and then stitched on many, many layers. In this form in particular, um, it was a solid form and I took my X-Acto knife and I cut out 
these <laughs> negative spaces and then stitched them down or stitched around them. That's it. Wow. <laughs> um, what is Yupo? Yupo is this plastic Japanese paper uh -huh. that comes in big rolls yes, or in separate yes, sheets. Yes, yes. So now I see that. But we'll come back a little on that. I can, in both, for both of you, I can see what looks like months of work. <laughs> yes. And this is not like an overnight thing, but there yes. are a number of other things to ask you about that. Thank you. I'm glad you had these details. Yeah. Because as I told you in the gallery, that when you see it up close, then you see all of these layers yeah. and things, but when you take a picture, you lose that. It becomes mm -hmm. one dimension there. So, but the colors are beautiful. The shapes are just so imaginative, and it's it's really lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so now then we're going to see the sculptures and keep in mind what these things are made of, people who are looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Michelle. Uh, so this is my work um, created from plastic bags. Um, these are crocheted and also um, this outside uh, cage-like form is a wrapped material, wrapped with the plastic material. So I uh, collect the plastic from, it's all post-consumer plastic, and I collect the, pap the plastic and then I have to sort by color, and then I process the material by flattening it out and then cutting it into loops and then looping the loops together to make the plastic yarn that I can then crochet with. Um, so there's a lot of steps before yeah. I actually even start working. Yes. <laughs> um, and this piece um, is related, uh, the, my most recent exhibit was based on seeds forms. So this is a, a based on a balloon seed form. And I have I've made a few artistic changes to, <laughs> to the form. To the but <laughs> but uh, my reference image is actually quite like this, um, which is uh, surprising in itself, the colors and the, um, the shapes that, are, that nature provides are, are you know, never ending. <laughs> yes, this is so true. Um, so, and this piece is called Capsule. And do I get to move up this? Yeah. Um, this is a much smaller piece. It's called Ovum. Um, and I think you can see in this image uh, the individual stitches uh, yes. for the piece. So this yeah. is about eight inches large. Um, and this is uh, based on a comfrey seed. So the uh, the this seed, it's very sexual shape, <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, but it's yeah. a seed. <laughs> it's very close to the original yeah. um, shape. And also created, so I'm using the stitching and then this uh, wrapping the plastic also in, in this one. Um, and inside, so each piece is crocheted. You know, I do this uh, preparation of the material and then I crochet my pieces and then I have to assemble the pieces until they are assembled over a form. They're very floppy like a sweater would be. Mm -hmm. um, so I create a an, an wire armature uh -huh, inside uh -huh. and I kind of stretch the pieces across that and, um, and then usually stitch that together and then I coat them with a coating of um, UV resin because the plastic doesn't biodegrade but it does photodegrade. Oh, so it will how about break that? down into many small pieces which are also floating in the ocean. Yeah, that's but true. <laughs> and true. And elsewhere. Yes. yes. And elsewhere. Yeah. Yes. Um, and this piece is called Progeny and it's quite a large piece, about 30 inches. Um, this one is a more, it's still based on the um, germinating form, but this one is much more from my imagination. Um, and I, some of the reference photos that I was looking at had these little feathery um, attachments, so I had mm -hmm. to figure out mm -hmm. what I could use to make that. Um, so I've used here on the sides, some of the pieces are cable ties, the red, and then I used some um, I cut some recyclable, harder plastic and painted it and attached that to the piece. Um, and so this germinating form comes down inside and uh, has this wire structure to uh, hold the shape. The scaffolding, yeah, like scaffolding, the inside, exactly. I see. Yeah. Um, and this piece is called Germinate. 
Uh, and it is also a more one that's more from my imagination than from an actual seed I was looking at. Although I think I think it looks like chestnut pod kind of shape. Um, it's a little more elongated, but um, and this one really takes on a more animal quality. You know, there's like it has like feet and like this tongue sticking out, but but also um, it's I think also really referencing a germinating form. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I'm building these pieces, I'm creating, so this one has many colors on it, and so, like I said, I'm, I continue to make the individual parts, and then I join the pieces together with a wire structure to give them their uh, oomph. <laughs> this is um, a large piece, a uh, floor piece, uh, it's about 12 feet long, and it is, um, Based on, so I learned about, you know, all of my work references what's happening with plastic mm -hmm, debris, mm -hmm. and so I learned about a plastic eating caterpillar, and I thought, oh, oh I, I have to do something with that, and uh, so the one one hundred of these plastic eating caterpillars can eat a plastic bag in a month. So I thought, oh, th this is going to have to be a little bigger. <laughs> well, my plastic eating caterpillar is much larger, and it's all created from plastic bags. And that's what's so astonishing, that when you look at this, like in the gallery, where you see it up, even in an image, you would never guess this is composed from plastic bags. I want to say something about this piece. Actually, it's a question. Does it self-consume? Yeah, there you are. <laughs> or it's full of caterpillars right. that uh, will devour it all in good time. <laughs> so this is a very large piece. So how many plastic bags did it take? Remember, everybody, they're recycled bags. So it took a while to get that. And then how long to put that together? Uh, well, it's taken a very long time to put it together. It's really hard to keep track of exactly how many Lost bags time. are in it. <laughs> um, but I did find, like, they, you can't really tell from the image, but there are slightly different shades yeah, of brown yeah. in there. So I was finding myself like, do you have any light brown bags? <laughs> <laughs> Recycle uh, you know, like, Begging people for their bags. But um, I, I was working on the sleeve part of it all of last summer and I was hoping to be done by New Year's and it took, you know, then I thought, okay, maybe maybe I'll be done by April. <laughs> um, but so, and there actually are two more segments that oh, I didn't oh, have enough bags for yeah. and didn't have enough time for. Right, right. That's, uh, That's amazing. And how do you color? I'd like, how do you the get The colors them? are all, they come in these colors. So the brown bags are from Shaw's or from Hannaford or Home Depot and the beautiful reds are from the Boston Globe. Um, ah, Globe that's Jackson. very clever. And they're all, they are like subtly different. The, yeah. the top pieces and the bottom pieces are subtly different. Yeah, this is what I saw in the gallery. You could see that, the slight shading yeah. and everything. But it is awesome to think that that was crocheted. I would just, <laughs> I can't imagine what a task that was. And I hope it'll inspire people. But it does make people aware, perhaps, that once you know that, you think, well, somebody's made good use of this recycled, of this of these plastic bags, but you become aware of a lot of plastic bags out there. And this is just plastic bags. Yeah. Right? Okay, Susan, over to you here. These, your work with these very uh, different kinds of materials, and your work, by the way, is very, a lot of it is very large, yes. so. Yeah, so 87 inches. Yeah, so I. so how long does it take you? Because you, you're <laughs> pulling together a lot of different materials, and uh, it, when you look at this, you think, this, this might have taken some time. It did take <laughs> some time. Different materials. <laughs> yeah, right, right, Some right. indeterminate time. <laughs> Another, you, so yes. you both lose yes. a sense of time when you're uh, working. Or sometimes we can tell all too well how much time it's yeah. taking when we miss deadlines. Or uh, yes. <laughs> when yes. I look at her work, I think, 
Oh, <laughs> I would never do that. Well, I, I, this is first, uh, yeah. Well, uh, both of you, but you know, you go to a gallery, you look at stuff, you might not realize the amount of time that no, goes into it. Not. But I was struck in the gallery looking at your individual work, and I thought, hmm, you have spent some time on this because of the materials, the, the 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 complexity of these things. So, like, how long do you figure you? For this. Well, some of these take several months. Um, I often go back and forth between working on the sewn pieces and uh, working on straight oil paintings. Ah, uh, I see. Um, because the both of us are engaged in a kind of madness. And good uh, to know. <laughs> okay. You're in the right With age. The <laughs> this is the, the right year. And uh, it just gets to be physically demanding. Yes, I'd um, imagine. And uh, I need to do something that uses my whole body instead of just my wrists. <laughs> right, I see, I see. Which my big oil paintings they, really they use do. the whole body. Now, yeah. assembling those materials, mm. th how do you think this out? Like, do you mm. make you a know, draft is, or does it emerge? It's, an, it's, a, it's a remarkably improvisatory process. Uh, uh, I, I don't ever know exactly what I'm going to do. I have a vague idea. Yeah. Uh, I have a vague color idea. Um, I have uh, monotypes in certain color ranges that I did many, many years ago of completely different imagery. Um, and then the other materials are just around the studio often. Uh, I often use a kind of uh, uh, papery material, almost like tissue paper, which is uh, a barrier paper for keeping works separate from each other. I see. The threads that I use have expanded tremendously from embroidery thread to metallic threads of all kinds to uh, stainless steel, uh, which I got from an industrial company, uh, which is very, very thin. Um, I haven't used that very much. It's very hard to work with. I was wondering if And I had to buy a whole expensive spool of it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. So I'll, look I for will a use piece it. of work yes. down the line here with, with, with that. So uh, I, the materials uh, get added from necessity and research and uh, talking to other artists. I, I learned about the Yupo, this plastic paper, from other artists. I see, I see. And I imagine we are in a time in history where there are, you know, uh, there's an abundance of so materials. Much. All you need to add is the imagination yeah. of which you both are phenomenally blessed. <laughs> but if I may say so, and it might be wrong, but it seems as though in a way you break the rules too. I mean, you're out to yeah. really look at things in a different way. Yeah. And it, uh, in this, with the interest in environment and in life and presenting this in a different form, you seem both very experimental, very mm. open to both in materials and in just your vision here. Would you say that's true to you? Are you, are you conscious of sort of out there to, you know, break away from tradition? I think so, I yeah. would say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I discovered for for quite a long time, uh, I had been doing the stitching on paper, and people said, "Why can't you do it in your oil paints, in your oil paintings?" And I said, "Well, you can't. The the thread is cotton. The oil paint will oxidize it over time and destroy it. So that doesn't make any sense uh -huh. at all." Uh, but I really wanted to experiment with that, and I finally found a way to combine the Yupo uh, with oil paint by, uh, well, it's complicated, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. I can paint you, with oil paint directly on the Yupo oh, oh. without any ground because it is plastic. So oh, it I takes the oil that. paint, and if I stitch onto the dry oil paint, uh, it should be okay if I let right. it dry But you have enough. to kind of experiment yeah, yeah, but with it's that all, kind of it's stuff. It's all trial too. and error yes, and experimentation. Yes, right. Now, you're both 
also very nature oriented. Have you both always been like very interested in nature? I mean, big, big time nature, yeah. not just one little yeah. thing. But this business of breaking away from gravity and yeah, yeah. doing all this <laughs> stuff and the concentration of them to, to be, as you said, horrified by the gyra, the plastic gyra. And then it, it inspires you to uh, act like this, uh, you know, to it, it act in the artistic way, to respond in that manner. Um, have you always had that nature in the background, or do you do other stuff? I think that for me, I have pretty much always had that mm. in the background. I studied the figure, um, so I think my, you know, really close observation of incredible, uh, you know, bodies and the beautiful yeah, forms yeah, that yeah. they have kind of flowed into just really like looking closely at all yeah. of nature and, and um, really considering those uh, other forms. And when I graduated from school, models weren't available, so I had to sort of think about what else I could and would want to do with those you know types of forms yes um, and I was able to like look around and really say oh you know there's a lot of beauty and there's and I do see like a struggle you know I'm always intrigued when like things sprout up on out of the sidewalk yeah, or yeah, you know yeah. metal fences are combined right. into a tree and so I had been kind of working around this issue for a long time before I started working with the crocheted plastic right that's interesting you should say that because you both seem to be like scientists in the background there too. <laughs> That's exactly the way scientists think. Mm. They notice things that we don't notice mm. in everyday life and they get great meaning out of what looks insignificant, something popping up out of the sidewalk and things like that, but all around. So you, it's interesting that how close this artistic vision and the scientific vision are. And do you think so too, Susan? Yeah, just, I agree I, you completely. Just, yes. Uh, um, because you take the microscopic to the cosmic yes. level, it's incredible. And you know. actually, as a child, I, I, uh, I loved looking through a microscope. My parents ah. bought me a microscope when I was about ten because I was so fascinated with those images. And um, my first drawings as a really young child, probably five and six, were drawings of tree branches that I saw out the windows of my house in Detroit, a very urban setting. <laughs> <laughs> Two trees in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved those forms. I loved yeah, those, yeah. those branching organic forms. And I loved observing, like Michelle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very interesting because you do present this in your work, and I consider it rather unique. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you got together, because I don't imagine you'd run into a lot of people like this. There are people that do <laughs> nature, na you know, based on nature, yeah. Yeah. but not with the kind of concerns that you have yeah. brought to it, and uh, the not with the the scope so to speak and then adding this incredible truly artistic imagination to it so i hope that you will continue your respective mm -hmm. efforts forever it's <laughs> very interesting do you i hope you will show together again because you really complement each other the the work in the the gallery in cambridge is just very interesting very lovely are you pleased very, very yes. pleased. Very. Yeah. We'd love to show in a larger space. Yes, we'd you love to show. You need a larger yeah. space. Yes. yes. <laughs> when you, yes. Said, you, know, so you did the exhibit at De Cordoba, I thought this needs to get out yeah. there, or something yeah, yeah. like that, because it's such a lovely either indoor or, well, you can't do it outdoor, yeah. but it, you need more space, yeah. definitely. I wish you the very best luck, and I thank you both for coming in and talking to us about this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. What an opportunity.